Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Good afternoon. Moro kaikille. Moro. Assalamu alaikum. Dobri, dobri deng. So, really happy to be here on stage and to share the day with you, forward looking professionals, individuals, internationals, locals, and to share the joy and passion for this topic diversity, inclusion, international talents, where we can all thrive. I want to thank you for the opportunity to share that passion because I've been doing this in Denmark um, in different advocacy roles before moving to Finland. And I'm just so like, I can't believe this is happening. <laughs> so uh, all of you who are seeing um, streaming, also hello to you. I, I did share the link and I promise to say hi to everyone who is going to be watching on stream. Um, and also I would like to acknowledge the hidden gems that are sitting here. Thank you for coming to Finland and I would like to give them a loud applause. <laughs> hidden gems. Yeah. So, I come a long way from an insecure teenager in Uzbekistan to find myself living 17 years in the Nordics, coming to becoming an advocate of change in causes that are close to my heart, social justice, equality, cross-cultural dialogue. And I will share my few stories um, of my experiences working and living in world's happiest nations. Yes, it's Denmark, country of Hugo you heard, and Finland, country of Sisu. And I want to test our Sisu level in this room today. Because for me, Sisu means not just the resilience, but also an ability to go out of your comfort zone and stay there. So tell me, how many of you did this ultimate Finnish experience, the Avanto? <laughs> oh my god, I did that too. <laughs> DNI, di diversity and inclusion in your company. So do that and then you're ready, <laughs> in my view. Yes, so we do this every year uh, in, with my friends from Russia, Iran, and uh, Hong Kong and Finland, in Kusjärvi in Tusula. So this is really uh, an already an international Finnish experience. But I'll tell you how I came up. There's a lot of identities today in the air. Uh, I, I came as an international student. I studied in Aarhus in Herning and then I worked in Copenhagen. And um, I studied communication, media, marketing, and it really, it, I left when I was 18 years old from Uzbekistan, uh, and it was super tough to be there because I moved to 2002 after the 9-11 happened. So having my hair color was not good, my origin, my religion. So it was also really like feeling the other um, minority or the exotic person, and, <laughs> uh, but it was amazing to see the, the, the freedom, the equality, the, the bicycles in Denmark, uh, and, and the whole idea of openness of the society. So um, I enjoyed the Erasmus lifestyle, this cafe lifestyle that we know. The, you know, the ability to go out in the night and you know, enjoy the safety. So, uh, but I also realized I wasn't like just an exciting international student. You, there's a time when you become a, a local. So there's two different ways to look at living in the Nordics, which is a democratic hotspot, which is such an exciting, everyone is curious how we make this life worth living, yeah, Nordic design, Nordic living. That when you are an international, there's one identity you think, are you here for transit, for the adventure, or are you here to stay? And then when you're a local, there's a whole other ideas and how you actually experience life. And for me, it was quite difficult. But what really helped me when I was a student, uh, is mentoring on pragmatic side. Mentoring, networking. Um, I also got a lot of uh, volunteer opportunities. I spoke out and I became a diversity advocate in, um, in, in Copenhagen when I moved there to, to actually to promote jobs for international students. And the fourth um, is the um, curiosity. So the curiosity is the uh, willingness to learn the worldview which is not your own. And I really was fascinated and confused by Danes and also in Finland for that matter. And on one side, it's like super open kind of environment. And the other side, we have these nationalistic fears and you know, the, you know, the whole media, you know, today we are really 
threatened economically, culturally, so existentially. And so we've heard today, where is the future of work? So um, with, with my student experiences, I, turned, I, I got a job. The three jobs that I had, they were all in the shipping and uh, logistics sector. First one I got through my network. Second job I got through, um, based on my personality. So I did a, write an application and my empathic manager at the time, he hired, even though I didn't have an engineering degree, I had to buy and purchase uh, spare parts and send them to the ship, ships and manage the Russian ski, uh, speaking captains on the vessels. So that cross-cultural perspective was really good. And the third job I got based on my experience and again network. So if you go any, anywhere from this ex ex presentation or my sharing story, just think social capital is new gold. Your networks, your friends, your connections, the peers, the love and support that you will not or may not get at the workplaces. So we have, I didn't think of staying in Finland, you know, the, this language already says it all. Rol, rol, me flol. <laughs> have you heard that? Yeah. Rol, rol, me flol. I'm serious. It means uh, dessert, Danish dessert with cream on. It's berries. And there's a Facebook group because people like to ask foreigners, can you say it? And whoever is from Denmark, I can say it. <laughs> and I, what did I do to get friends? Because it was difficult to break into the social circles which are tied up from high school, from university, and to, to the work. I joined sports activities. I started running. I, I hated running. So I now do trail run also in Finland. I joined alumni association at the university. So the universities are really playing a big role today to create that sense of belonging. And I did 10,000 hours of volunteering, which I'll come back a bit later. Um, so, what's the difference of working from Denmark and Finland? It's, um, yes, we were not many in the company who were different. There were still minority numbers and not all companies, except Morse Klein, as you know, it's the uh, largest container shipping company. They, of course, they have a diverse inclusion manager. They have the whole, you know, the metrics, the strategy. Other companies, the startup and the middle-sized company, it was, you know, recruitment by necessity. And uh, it was also not really, I couldn't really see myself, like what is out there? What is my career path? What is my tree? Um, what's the career tree and promotion uh, possibilities? But um, what was interesting is on, in Finland, I, I got the job in Merskline Line and that gave me possibility to move here to join my husband. So that was great and, and those who you know, who move here, I, I moved in June 30th and July 1st, I went to work, so it was like two years crazy um, working there. Uh, so I didn't really learn anything about Finland because I had 80 travel days uh, in, in my sales job. So basically what I did, I was selling these used containers, thousands of them in 28 countries around the world. Super exciting, never thought I would do this. <laughs> so when talking about opening up your, co your company internationally, think, what about your industry? Can you do something together and open up the, and break up the stereotypes of the industry of maritime, let's say, uh, that whole ecosystem that uh, students don't really, you know, think about, say, hey, I want to do container sales. It was the most international job I could imagine. Yeah. And um, in Finland, yes, it was, a, uh, I was two out of, 40 international, not, 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 in, not Finnish speaking um, employees. And it was a bit lonely. <laughs> Lunches, it was like, yes, we're in a small kitchen. Um, I had a few colleagues, which was here. You can see Sato and Nico. Noni. Noni. Perkele. That was a lot of things that I heard like that. <laughs> they taught me all the bad wor words in Finnish you can imagine. And, and they're the best friends I have because they included me in part of conversation where everything was in Finnish. And I couldn't ask them to change it because, you know, it's a Finnish company fixing, I mean, Finnish international company, but working for with Finnish clients. But still, uh, Miko and Sato, they really helped me with in integration. So what did I do? I enjoyed the sauna. Yes. Savu sauna too. Kayaking, that was new. Uh, other two colleagues, they helped me to fall in love with Finnish nature, not just the lakes and berries, but actually 
doing something in the, those lakes. So I advise everyone who is new to onboard yourself to this why fans love nature. It's try the kayaking. It's mind blowing. I was super scared. I was like, what am I doing? You know, being on the water, I'm gonna tip, I'm gonna tip, I'm gonna tip. But this is really like the sisu that I got from Thomas and, and, and uh, Mika. And, and, and we also did the trail runs, uh, Helsinki trail runs. So this is really, time goes by and I got to know local people in a free time. And I also opened um, a global dignity NGO. <laughs> it's uh, where we make diversity and dignity tangible to young people. So um, I was, like I said, feeling the other, the Muslim, the immigrant, the da -da -da. I was just trying to bring people together, that we all are dignified. We all are people and we need each other to succeed. And these messages we arrange with um, students, speakers. I'll jump this slide for now. Um, here, you see this big stage? This is a Mesukeskos in Helsinki. So we arrange speaker events for young boys and girls in secondary schools and colleges. And, and we reached 3,500 students in four years. So that's um, diverse inclusion already from the school because I do believe we, if we give these discussions those young people will become the future leaders and they will be more tolerant and more inclusive and more open to people like you and I who, who don't look the same. Um, so, and it's all about people at the end. Uh, we, we, we do enjoy cof uh, coffee, fresh air, almost low, almost strawberries. We enjoy um, this, you know, again, this vegan joints and surnine. And, but I think most of us want to really matter for the other people and to share that happiness. And so these people, I went to, to back to Herning this summer. Herning was the toughest experience in my life. 30,000 people, city, and imagine you're an international student and you walk down the street speaking English and then people come to you and say, why are you speaking English? You have to speak Danish. And you were like, these people were against me by default. And I said, we're international students. And, and that really was like feeling unwanted, you know, even though we hear that, yes, we want international workforce, we want international students in Denmark. But that experience really shook me. I was like, I'm gonna die here. <laughs> How am I gonna manage? But I got a job, luckily, the best job ever, in an Irish pub <laughs> as a bartender. <laughs> I didn't want to say it to my dad, you know. In my culture, we don't drink alcohol, right? <laughs> At least girls don't. And so these guys were my uh, cust old customers in Herning. I went back this year. I was, you know, at the time I was super vulnerable, and this time I was feeling a bit more powerful. And I was like, guys, this is so nice to meet you. And we, you know, be giving hugs to each other. And this really is what community life is all about. This is what I'm trying to replicate, that we can all belong after work, that we're not bored, because after work we know what we do, we have our lives together, fitness, hobbies, kids' hobbies, your own hobbies, triathlon, whatever. So, but what do you need to do when you're international? You have no family, you have no friends, like, and as in just other students who are also struggling to make a living. So these guys, they really made me, made me matter. And this is my 10,000 hours of volunteering. <laughs> Sorry, it's a busy slide. But this was to say, diversity and inclusion has been such on my heart that I wanted to make sure whoever in Denmark and Finland, not feeling a majority, that we all matter. And that's why I've been building bridges since February. I have my own consulting. And I want to make everyone meet across postcodes, across national nationality, social standing, business profession, so that we really show how we can all come together and add value, whatever value that is, shareholder value, grow, make money, feel that we are all human beings. And, and today, uh, the lady from Avadin said, it's all about experiences. Life is great. Look at this, technology is there for us, but how do we share that happiness? We're still human beings. And what I feel is we need to come out of our comfort zones and see how do we build connections today? How do we dare as companies, as individuals, to diversify our own networks? That we get those experiences and make people matter because we all are isolated, we feel inadequate, insignificant. And I'm sure some of us are feeling really, really shitty about our social networks. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's just too much, right? And we just need to come back to basics. I, I, I feel um, th not even thinking, you know? Again, how to make friends, they told me, get a kid. Or, I'm over there, this guy, and he's right there. So talk to someone. <laughs> and I don't have any, I don't have kids, I don't have dog. My husband has an allergy. What do I do? So that's why I enjoyed the volunteering and it was super easy to engage. What I really proved to the world, why I stayed these years and struggled, I did so much volunteering and I was like, you're not getting paid for it. But I needed to make sure that I needed to succeed my, to prove to my family, to prove to the world that my origin and my ethnicity is not an obstacle to lead a full life. And that's what I'm trying to make everyone understand and feel and replicate these experiences, believe in themselves. But who make you believe in themselves? You, it's your peers, strangers, you know, all these mentors that I got. So mentors, all, all of them, I, I'm just super grateful. And all of you, the HR professionals, I see you as new teachers in this world. How do you open the possibilities for internationals, for people who are, not, who are different, for people who are really trying to succeed and be useful? So that is the way to really look in. So how do we open up and, and make people reach their potential? So yes, yeah, so what happens with diversity and inclusion? There is a lot of focus on it, and, and Columbia Business School research says there is $8 billion spending per year on all these efforts to improve company culture, to improve performance, and to also pre present customers. And we all know that. Um, and how there's great you know, conversations taking place in Finland, good ones, maybe positive ones, less positive. This one is to promote, enable, and, and remove prejudices and biases. This one is work doesn't discriminate by the Ministry of Employment. And we have also discussion about English and Finnish, which we also discussed today. How do we manage that? And I believe Finland has just been named eighth best country in the world to speak English. So that's just BS. <laughs> I think Finland is um, amazing. They love their language. It's not a threat. It's, there's still books in Finnish. And they are excellent to, to speak Finland, uh, English. So that's why it's so nice and easy to live here. So. And then we talked about AI this morning, uh, this afternoon as well, that we're not going to just deal with race, gender, disabilities, diversities. We're going to have all, even digital assistants and robots to include in the environment. So it's an exciting future of work, but I keep the human-centric perspective. So how to go from this, <laughs> with all those problems that we're facing, to this? Um, and this is a great um, visuals from Kir Katri Kirkopelto. I, I learned Finnish in her, with her books. Um, where was it? Yeah, I'm gonna s try to see. Have, have anyone heard this diversity is being invited to a party? Yeah, and inclusion is being asked to dance and belonging, dancing like no one is watching. So this is something that's been taking rounds and just to kind of show it, what does it really mean? And I've been focusing in my employment and my life in the Nordics uh, on this side, the, the inclusion and the belonging side, because we may get the idea that yes, we are professionally good, we can have our visas, we can have our, uh, our you know, basics settled, but how do we actually belong and get our potential and being part of the decision making? So what I believe is for each company, easy to understand what does really diverse inclusion roadmap mean. Everyone can create their own one, and it simply means better working, better earning, better living, where it should be understood as a holistic view for both employers and employees. How does it work? How do we make it work? How do we make sure there is, you know, it's a bottom line, because we do, who wants to start early, you can build traineeship programs to take those international uh, students, because I was one of them, I already knew what is teamwork, what is shared learning, what is urgency and task-based efficiency, and I knew the culture, so if students, international students apply, they are the low-hanging fruits. 
because they know what the culture is about and they probably want to stay. So the retention uh, element is higher. So I'll just quickly skim through it. Um, better working, yes, we know the statistics. It's, you know, cognitively diverse companies. They perform better. There's be faster decision making. It's not easy, but they perform better. <laughs> That's uh, said. And fixing the language is basically how, how do we promote our jobs in English, our signatures and emails, and how is it that um, we promote ourselves at career fairs? Is it all in Finnish and then we still want internationals? Uh, and also how to manage the language at work. Uh, Danish companies already offer Finnish, uh, Danish courses to um, employees, but that also could be offering English courses to locals so that there is a you know learning lifelong learning perspective in it. And 54% of Finnish employees actually took part in company learning. So that's a great way to also promote what is good about Finnish culture is this love for learning and being always better. And of course here the, the commitment is important to show what kind of product, what do we need to learn to adopt the diverse inclusion um, uh, roadmap. And the, the earning, yes, we have the innovation, the strong bottom line, and, and I focus here on sustained employee well-being. Uh, in Nordic Tankers, I worked with two elderly employees, uh, which are 60 plus. So the way we did this well-being is that we shared their roles differently. And it was super cool to say that we don't need to compete with each other, but really complement each other um, roles. And better living, this is what is retention all about. What I have did after work is I engaged in volunteering and civic engagement, and I've started advoca advocating to companies today to in build volunteer com organization projects so that employees do stuff together they learn to do good and they build better relationships. And 81% said that it improved their relationships and there's a better sense of feeling included and feeling of belonging. Um, so also what is important is, like I said, the career path so that everyone can co contribute and grow, which I didn't really feel in Nordic Tankers, um, but still um, there, is then there is also different ways to motivate people to, to work and to stay in the company. So um, this is just a question have if, if to pose, what is the culture fit versus culture add in your company? And how could you look at the ca career um, recruiting patterns? And, um, and I already mentioned this part, how approachable are you to a company, uh, to, to internationals so they can find you. And I have here a shortcut present so again, building on traditional partnerships and promoting its international students, uh, alumni associations, promoting it in language schools, building the employer brand, and for example, as shortcut in Helsinki, and there's also Tampere uh, communities in every different city. So I will um, start, I need to wrap up here, uh, but this is like, again, small tweaks can make a huge difference in terms of what can be uh, your brand, your, your company, to, to, the, um, to internationals, that Finns have a big heart. It already is the, one of the best international students, or you can start working with, you know, recruiting international talents, building your partnerships. But if it, it will only matter if diversity matters for your company goals. And I've come to believe that with all my experiences, that only between people, dynamics of people and culture, we can succeed and innovate and grow. And you can all do that today, build the roadmap and see that, that it's in your hands to build the partnerships and open up, empower yourself and make way for other companies. So I think Finland can become the next champion in diversity inclusion, as you have done with education as the most innovative country. Because that requires commitment, little investment, and the willingness to say, yes, we can change together, because we all are here to succeed, and we need each other to succeed. Thank you very much.
please come and talk to me after. Be great. Kiitos, kiitos. Thank you, Camille.